In this video, we are going to learn how to classify quadrilaterals in the coordinate plane. So the situation is, suppose you are given a picture of a quadrilateral on a coordinate plane, and you're asked, what type of quadrilateral is this? So is it a parallelogram? Is it a kite? Is it a trapezoid? Is it a rhombus? What is it? So the way we're going to approach this is, first, make a guess. Because if you can see what it looks like, if you have it there on the coordinate plane, then you can probably have a good guess about what it might be just based on what it looks like. And if you're not given a picture, you should draw the picture first with whatever information you're given. After you make a guess about what it is, so for example, say you guess that it's a trapezoid, then you should use the definition of the shape you said it was or properties of that shape to show that you're right. You actually do have to show some work. You can't just say, oh, well, it looks like a trapezoid, so it is one. If it was, you're trying to say it's a trapezoid, you have to show that there are one pair of parallel sides by looking at the slopes and showing that the slopes are the same. Now, two things might happen. You might find that you were right, you were able to verify whatever guess you had, or you might find that you're actually wrong. Perhaps you thought that the sides were parallel, but it turns out they're not. And at this point, you should make a new guess if you need to. So if it turns out that you were wrong, just repeat this process over again, make a new guess, and sort of start over. So let's look at how this might play out. Here we have a picture of a quadrilateral. It's clearly a quadrilateral because it has four sides. And the question is, what type of quadrilateral is this? So the guess that I'm going to make is a kite because I think it sort of looks like a kite. So to show that it's a kite, I'm going to have to show that it has two pairs of adjacent congruent sides. So that means I'll have to find the length of all four sides and show that two pairs match up. So I'm going to have to go through and find the length of RS, of ST, of VT, and of RV. So remember to find the length of a side. You want to look at the two endpoints for that side and figure out the change in the x coordinates and the change in the y coordinates. So the change in the x coordinates would be the length of this segment right here, which is 7. And the change in the y coordinates will be this length, which is just 1. So that means that the length of RS is the square root of 7 squared plus 1 squared. And we can simplify that to the square root of 49 plus 1, or the square root of 50. Now let's go and check on RV. And the reason I'm doing that next is that RV should be the same length as RS. So for RV, again, we want to figure out the change in the x-coordinates and the change in the y-coordinates. So the change in the x-coordinates down here is just 1. The change in the y-coordinate is 7 because it's going from 0 up to 7. So that means, again, actually, my length will be 1 squared plus 7 squared and the square root of all of that. I can see that's the same as it was for RS. So my answer will just be the square root of 50. So, so far I'm good, in good shape because these two match up. I know I have at least one pair of congruent sides. So we're going to do the same thing for ST and VT. For ST, I want to find the change in X and the change in Y. So the change in X is 3 and the change in Y is 9. So that means that the length of st is the square root of 3 squared plus 9 squared, which is 9 plus 81, or the square root of 90. So last we have to check vt and see if that also equals the square root of 90 for its length. So checking out the change in x and the change in y, the change in x is 9, and the change in y is 3, 
So the length is the square root of 9 squared plus 3 squared. And look, that's the same thing as it was over here. So our answer for the length is the square root of 90. And these two match up. Therefore, it must be a kite because it has two pairs of adjacent congruent sides. So the last thing you want to say is actually state your answer. It's a kite because two pairs of adjacent congruent sides. And you would want to leave all your work there so you show that you actually went through and checked.